Good afternoon. My name is Van der Lennen. I am Professor of Immunology and Neurology at Mayo Medical School and I'm Director of the Neuroimmunology Laboratory at Mayo Clinic. Um, the work we are reporting was a joint effort involving my own laboratory, uh, Dr. Shannon Hinson, uh, is the lead author on the paper and the work involves Dr. Michael Romero, a, a, a water transport expert at Mayo Clinic and it also involves um, Dr. Claudia Lucanetti who is a clinical neurologist at Mayo Clinic with expertise in the pathology of this disorder. Uh, in addition we have collaborators, three of them in Germany, basic scientists, working in the ultrastructure of water channels in the astrocyte. It's a disease known as neuromyelitis optica. Uh, this is, was, until the last decade, thought to be a variant of multiple sclerosis. It was thought to be a very rare disease and m my colleagues who are neurologists here at Mayo Clinic and myself have shown in the last eight years that this is not multiple sclerosis. There's an antibody that can clearly distinguish this disorder from multiple sclerosis and it's not exactly a rare disease either. Uh, it is more aggressive than multiple sclerosis and it's caused by an antibody, not by the T-cells that have always been implicated in multiple sclerosis. Interestingly, this disease disproportionately affects um, African ethnicity, uh, Latino and Asian populations, both in North America and in um, the countries that these people uh, are, come from. Um, it also affects Caucasian populations. The target is not the myelin, which people traditionally think about with multiple sclerosis, although myelin is affected farther downstream, and the primary target is not the myelin-producing cell, which is the oligodendrocyte. The target cell is the astrocyte, which actually is 10 times more abundant in the brain than the neurons themselves. The astrocytes um, coordinate and uh, protect the function of the neurons in the brain, both in terms of nutrition and in terms of all the more sophisticated activities that the brain has. We don't know what causes multiple sclerosis or what the target of the immune attack is in multiple sclerosis. But in neuromyelitis optica, the target is a water channel that's on the surface membrane of the astrocytes. The antibody that causes the disease is also the same antibody that can enable this disease to be distinguished from multiple sclerosis diagnostically. So what we are reporting here builds on what has also been reported by ourselves and others in the last few years. The the first things that we discovered about the antibody is that when it binds to this water channel in a model cell culture system, it causes the internalization of the water channel off the surface of the astrocyte so that, or the model cells, so that that would interfere with water transport. But if it's not cleared off the surface of the membrane, the antibodies can activate complement, which is a very destructive series of enzymes that, uh, that cause lethal holes to be drilled through the membrane of the cell, so killing the cells. What we've found in this paper is that the antibodies have different effects on the two different forms of water channel, the aquaporin-4 water channel, and the outcome uh, which clinically is known to differ in different regions of the brain and the spinal cord and the optic nerve. It's more aggressive in some parts of the nervous system than in others. And what we're finding now is that depending which form of the aquaporin-4 water channel, 
that the antibodies are binding to, it can cause totally different outcomes. For example, the internalization only occurs when the antibody binds to the what we call the M1 form of the water channel. If it binds to the more abundant M23 form, it that form of the water channel resists internalization and the antibodies coalesce the M23 form of the water channel into very huge arrays which make a perfect target for killing in a much more magnified way by the complement system. So depending on the ratio of the the, abund the relative abundance of the M1 and the M23 forms of the antigen in the astrocytes, you will get either massive killing by the complement or um, if it's got more of the M1, it will escape the killing. The other thing that biologically is important is that there isn't complement floating around in the healthy nervous system, so the antibody gets there first. So if it can be internalized, the target water channel, it's going to be protected from the complement destruction. But if the antibody binds, coalesces the water channels into these big arrays, if nothing else happens, the next phase of the immune response is the astrocyte cell itself makes complement and that could then, as it's released from the activated astrocytes, bind to the antibody on the surface of the cell and kill the cell. However, some of the antibodies don't bind complement and what we've found in this new uh, study that we are reporting is that some of these antibodies can actually interfere with the transport of the water. The additional important finding that Dr. Lucanetti is reporting in this paper is that in some areas of the brain of uh, autopsy tissues from these patients, there is a peculiar accumulation of water in the myelin itself and we think this is one of the things that leads to the secondary destruction of the myelin that does occur in this disease leading later to the misdiagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Research is very translational sitting between the molecular studies, the basic science of the water channels and the clinical findings in the brains of the patients and the imaging findings uh, of the living patients so that it, it illustrates the importance of the funding of basic science hand in hand with the clinical sciences and we were very fortunate that for the last four years our laboratory has been supported by the Guthy Jackson Foundation which is based in Los Angeles and they have had the wisdom to fund very basic aspects of the disease that I've talked about today so that it can be applied to more rational therapies and novel therapies for the patients. For example, one therapy that is being considered at the moment is to use an antibody to fight the destructive antibodies. These antibodies would recognize the water channel and get there first and stop the complement activating antibodies getting to do the damage to the cells. But now that we've found that some of the antibodies can actually block the function of the channel, then it makes the treatment options more complex. And um, it's always important to be understanding the basic mechanisms of the disease in addition to hoping for curative treatments, which is what we all want to see um, as an outcome of every phase of the basic science therapy, basic science studies.